The following 10 horror movie characters could all be categorized as unfortunate in a number of different ways. Some were only in the positions they were in by chance, while others suffered a fate so gruesome and twisted that death would have actually been preferable. Horror is absolutely full of poor, unfortunate souls. So I'm Gareth, this is What Culture Horror, and here are 10 more of the most unfortunate victims in horror movies. Number 10, Dr. William Weir, Event Horizon. Event Horizon from 1997 is a sci-fi horror set in the not-too-distant future, where interplanetary travel has been made easy thanks to revolutionary reality-bending technology. The titular spacecraft turns up orbiting Neptune after seven years of no contact, and it's up to the crew of a rescue ship to find out what happened. It turns out that the Event Horizon accidentally opened a portal to a dimension full of horrible monsters, which nobody had on their bingo card, apparently. Some Sam Neill plays Dr. William Weir in the film, the designer of the stricken vessel who tags along for the ride. He invented the experimental engine that caused all these problems, and in true karmic fashion, he is the one who suffers the most from it. Weir gets possessed by an interdimensional spirit, which forces him to tear out his own eyeballs. If that wasn't bad enough, he then proceeds to kill his fellow crewmates in grisly fashion. He also has it pretty bad, getting blasted into space and hideously mutilated before before finally being defeated. And all he wanted to do was check up on his ship. Now what's your favorite sci-fi horror of all time? Is it Event Horizon or something else? You let me know in the comments section down below. Number nine, Amy Herman, Megan is Missing. Megan is Missing is a found footage movie from 2011. It is also not for the faint of heart, as it details the disappearance of a schoolgirl by using real abduction cases as reference points. 14-year-old Megan Stewart and her friend Amy Herman both vanish, leading investigators to scour their online activity for clues to their whereabouts. They discover that the girls' lives were far from peachy, and that Megan had been chatting with a mysterious web user claiming to be a 17-year-old boy in the days before her disappearance. The quote-unquote boy who goes by Josh ends up kidnapping Megan. After worrying for days about her missing friend, Amy attempts to track her down, but is also kidnapped by Josh. After being humiliated and assaulted by her captor, Amy is told to get inside a large barrel that Josh has placed in the middle of the woods. If that wasn't bad enough, Amy discovers that she is sharing the barrel with Megan's decaying corpse. The film then ends with this sadistic killer digging a hole in which to bury the evidence of his crimes. Horrible stuff. Number 8, Peter Graham, Hereditary. Part of the twisted genius of Ari Aster's Hereditary is how it pivots from one character's focus to another. Much of the attention is focused on Annie Graham, wife of Steve and mother of Peter and Charlie. Things begin to get creepy after the funeral of Annie's mother, before then going super duper mega creepy when Charlie dies in a freak accident. If you want to look up the details of this accident, then make sure you do so on an empty stomach, because my goodness. As it becomes apparent that her mother was living a double life as a cult leader, leader, Annie begins to deteriorate, making more and more shocking discoveries before being confronted by the demonic force that is behind all of this carnage. She is ultimately possessed by the spirit, as Steve burns to death in front of her. Now yes, that is pretty unfortunate, but spare a thought for poor Peter. Not only does he witness and play a part in his sister's death, but he is also the last family member standing, meaning he finds his father's body and is chased by his own mother in demon form. Families, eh? What are they like? Number 7, Anna Asawi, Martyrs. An orphanage is a pretty good place to start a horror film, and that's exactly where the action begins in 2008 Martyrs. Lucy, who was held hostage and tortured as a child, befriends former orphan Anna, who promises to stand by her no matter what. That resolve is tested when several years later, Lucy breaks into a family's house and violently murders them all. Hopefully that vow Anna made wasn't legally binding. Anna discovers that the so-called innocent family wasn't so blameless though, as the group was involved in the sinister kidnapping plot. But while Lucy ends up killing herself, Anna stays alive and ends up in the plotter's possession, which turns out to be much, much worse. Her kidnappers are part of a sinister sect who believe that, by abducting people and subjecting them to unbelievable pain, they will be able to gain an insight into what lies beyond death. 
Anna is next in line and ends up flayed alive for her trouble. Look, this is a horrible fate on its own, but it's even worse when you consider that it never would have happened if she hadn't have been so nice to Lucy when they were young. She was just trying to be a pal. Number six, Christine Brown dragged me to hell. After taking a break from horror to make Spider-Man movies, Sam Raimi returned to the genre that made him famous with 2009's Drag Me to Hell. The main character of the story is Christine Brown, a loans officer who refuses to extend the mortgage of an old lady. Christine then learns a very valuable lesson, never cross the elderly. The lady transpires to be a witch, who curses a button on Christine's coat. After being tormented by a malicious force, Christine goes to extreme lengths to break the affliction, including sacrificing her pet cat. The poor thing. She is forced to dig up the old lady's grave. She died shortly after cursing her, and shove an envelope containing the button into her mouth, breaking the enchantment for good. At least that's what she thinks, but no. There was a mix-up and the button was never actually returned to the witch, meaning that the curse is still active. The film ends with Christine being literally dragged to hell by an array of demonic hands that burst through the ground beneath her. Then again, she did work for a large bank, so maybe she deserved it. Thanks for checking out this video today. Now tap that subscribe button down below for more horrific stuff like this in your peaceful life. Number 5, Dr. Miranda North, Life When it comes to aliens in films, there are two kinds usually. The fun ones who want to help humanity by making their bicycles fly, and the horrible, rotten, evil ones. In 2017's Life, the extraterrestrials fall into the latter category, folks. On the International Space Station, a group of scientists receive soil samples from Mars that might contain alien life. How exciting! They discover a life form that, at first, is single-celled, but quickly grows into a more complex being. They name the creature Calvin, because why not? Calvin eventually escapes its confinement, kills a crew member, and runs roughshod over the station, leaving the remaining crew in quite the intergalactic pickle. They then concoct a plan to destroy the station and blast Calvin off into space. Dr. David Jordan volunteers to sacrifice himself to save humanity, while Dr. Miranda North is chosen to fly home to Earth and warn them of the Martian threat. Alas, the pods ultimately get swapped around though, and Miranda gets sent into the eternal blackness, cursed to drift through space for as long as the pod holds out, or she can stave off starvation. Lovely. An undeniably awful way to go, I'm sure you'll agree. Number 4, Caroline Ellis, The Skeleton Key once again, the skeleton key is a case of why all people are not to be trusted and should be kept under constant surveillance. Caroline Ellis is a good-hearted healthcare worker who becomes the guardian of an old plantation building in Louisiana. She meets the residents, an old couple named Violet and Benjamin, who are both suffering from debilitating health complaints. Over the course of the movie, Caroline discovers that the people she has been caring for are actually practitioners of hoodoo, a form of dark magic. Violet, who was once an African-American slave named Mama Cecil, casts a spell that allows her to switch bodies with her younger victim, trapping Caroline in inside Violet's aging frame. To make matters worse, Cecil feeds her a paralyzing potion, condemning Caroline to be trapped inside a decrepit body for the rest of its natural life. Helping the aged is seen as one of the nicest, most selfless things a person can do. But for the hero in this story, it totally backfired. Cheer up, Caroline, there are some upsides to being old, probably. Number three, Ben, Night of the Living Dead. When it comes to zombie movies, few are as important and innovative as George A. Romero's 1968 masterpiece Night of the Living Dead. Romero broke the mold in so many ways with this film, including creating so many of the conventions of zombies that are still active today. He also went against the grain by casting Dwayne Jones, a black man, in the lead role, something that was very rare for the time. Jones plays Ben, an innocent man caught up in an undead uprising. Along Alongside a mixed matched group of survivors, Ben fends off the ghouls. They weren't called zombies back then, you see. And thanks to his quick wit and bravery, is able to survive the night. Celebrations all round. Or so it seems. The next morning, a group of armed men arrive to kill the remaining ghouls. As Ben leaves his shelter to meet them, they mistake him for a monster and shoot him dead. His body is burnt on a big pyre, leaving no trace of his heroic actions. There's a lot that can be read into from this ending, and none of it is pleasant. Number 2. Wallace Brighton, Tusk 
If the walrus is your favorite animal, then for the love of God, do not watch Tusk from 2014. It will do you no favors. In this Kevin Smith-directed monstrosity, a young man named Wallace Brighton travels to Canada and conducts an interview with a deranged old sailor. What happens next is beyond insane, people. One of the most creative and disturbing plots in recent Western horror. The sailor drugs Wallace and severs one of his legs, before forcing him to fit into a walrus suit made out of human skin. Oh, it gets worse. It turns out that the old man is infatuated with a walrus that once pulled him to safety after a shipwreck and plans to turn Wallace into his beloved Mr. Tusk so they can spend one final day together. That is messed all the way up. Cue Wallace enduring severe physical and mental torture, including being fitted with tusks made of his own leg bone before his friends show up to witness his tragic transformation. The movie ends with Wallace still living as a walrus in a wildlife sanctuary, which, yeah, it's all pretty bleak, really. Number 1. David Drayton, The Mist When it comes to characters with unfortunate endings, there is no one more suited than the master of misery himself, Stephen King. In 2007, King's novella The Mist got the big screen treatment, introducing a new audience to one of his darkest finales. The story centers on David Drayton, who, along with his young son Billy, gets trapped in a supermarket by a mysterious fog that envelops their town. Now, fog is one thing, but this one houses various creatures that have no problem devouring any Anyone who comes near them. After surviving a series of interpersonal conflicts with the other people in the store, David and Billy make it to their car and drive away. However, when they return home, they find that David's wife has been killed. Seeing no other option, David decides to perform a mercy killing on his son and then take his own life. He shoots Billy dead. But just as he's waiting to be eaten by the creatures, the army arrives. They have rounded up all of the beasts and cleared the fog. David just kills killed his son for no reason then. Christ. 